Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tuned In with Jim Cummings. Today, we're sitting down with Kylie Vernoff. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm thrilled to be here. And the crowd went wild. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very, very much for being here. Yeah. And uh, I know you're out there keeping busy and looking fabulous, by the way. Thank may you I so say, much. Thank you so much. You're literally in the pink. I am. See that? Just for the occasion. What's the occasion? The occasion is sitting down with you. The occasion is. That's sitting right. down with you. <laughs> yes, it and is. And meeting some more beautiful fans and, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's a great place to be. Yeah. Here we are on the muddy Mississippi. Oh, no, wait. No, uh-uh. I actually don't know what river. Is it? It's I, not the Thames. What is it? Uh, is it the Thames? The, the I, don't know. I don't know. It's the wharf it's the, without it's canaries. It has the <laughs> and boats. Thank There's, you. It's the barge, yeah, canary-free yes, canal wharf. With, with all the cranes on it. Oh, gosh. I love a good crane. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, nice to see you. Yeah, really nice, nice to, to see you, see too. You. Is it hard being the queen of the video game circuit? And, oh, my uh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for saying that. The queen. Well, you know what's fun is, uh, yeah, so my character in Red Dead Redemption mm -hmm. is... Um, She's not a queen, but she would like to think she is. But she is maybe the camp mama, the camp Ooh. matriarch, the camp oh, okay. boss. I was uh, good, That kind of mama. It's a good kind of mama. The okay. good kind of, well, everyone would rot in their own filth if it weren't for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So wow. I keep everyone in line. So you've been a lot of hosing down then. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of, there, there's a lot of forcing... Well, there's one Ooh. one scene. Notice she didn't finish that sentence. Yeah, there's a lot of forcing. There's anyway, a lot of forcing. We, we... <laughs> uh, there's there's actually one great scene in our in our game where mm. if you're playing as Arthur Morgan, who is Roger mm -hmm. Roger Clark, who you've sure, sure. I, I think you've met at some of these conventions, um, he uh, comes back to camp and he's filthy, and my character forces him to wash to bathe. <laughs> And, um, and oh. yeah, and then I, <laughs> the odd thing is that I force him to wash and then depending on how dirty he is or what, you know, certain things that can happen in the game prior, there are mm. different endings. And one of them is I slap him hard across the face. Oh. And then he pays me. <laughs> and we're still not sure what exactly is happening there. Would that but, qualify um, as a happy ending? <laughs> I, I, apparently not. It was, but, but hey, when yeah, I, give a slap, and then he's like, "Well, thank you for your trouble." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, okay, it's going a whole um, nother way what's here today. Between Grimshaw and Arthur, but yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a very uh, popular scene in the game. Is all I'm saying. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. it truly is. And um, is it true that you did something in uh, Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, but Grand I was Theft trying Auto to think. 5? I was going to yeah. say in a pawn shop. Is it a pawn shop? No, it's a gun shop. Anyway, Grand Theft Auto. It, yes, yeah. yes. So I play Miranda Cowan in Grand Theft Auto, mm. who is, um, she's in like the paparazzi mission. Mm. Um, and it's so fun. I, so that, I was in the middle of shooting Red Dead when I got mm -hmm. um, just a regular booking from my agent saying mm. you're going to Rockstar. And so I figured it was Red Dead. And although my call was a little later, so I should have maybe put something together that maybe we weren't going out to the big studio mm. but I got there and I'm walking in Soho about to head to Rockstar offices and I see one of my main producers and he says hey what are you doing in this neighborhood I said I'm coming to work and he said no you're not I said I am though I'm sure I'm booked uh -oh. and uh he looked his little iPad and he said oh yeah yeah you're on you're on GTA 5 today and I had no idea. My agents hadn't, I don't think anyone knew because you know they are tight with their mm. information. Mm -hmm. So I got there and I found out that I was playing this character sort of loosely based on like a Chris Kardashian, like a oh, aging boy. party girl. Sorry, Chris Kardashian, but, if anyone but, is friends with her. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You, you had a couple bucks. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Who likes, so she's like, likes to be in limos, likes to be in the club, likes to get her swerve on and says things like, <laughs> swerve her on. swerve on. And basically all they said are, here are the lines, can't sound anything like your character from, uh, from Red Dead. Mm. And so come up with something quick. 
And um, so we found this kind of like, can you believe the paparazzi thinks I'm 40? <laughs> I don't party with anyone older than 25. Like this kind of like, oh, gosh. I'm going to meet my special friend at the club. Do you want anything that he's selling? <laughs> like that kind of stuff, Ooh. which was really fun. It was just so fun so to be put on the spot. Was there a soundtrack in the background while you were? Oh, psst, yeah. Psst, psst, yes. Psst, 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 psst. Yes. Well, first it's a car rate because we're in the limo. So. First, we're in the car, and there's like screeching mm. tires, and then we get oh, into you the can't beat a good and... screech. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I swear oh, that's, that's one of the great. best missions in the game. Like that's that's oh such God. a fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really fun time. Oh my gosh, it was so and it's, fun. It's like so unique because like you're using like the aiming mechanism, but you're taking pictures or trying to target the oh target the limo with the what you'd normally like oh yeah yeah use the same mechanics to shoot people oh yeah <laughs> you're shooting in a different way you know? uh -huh. well, you are, well you are shooting people however <laughs> they survive yeah. and then go like this at the end of it right yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been shot before i have been shot i have been shot <laughs> i have been shot have you played red dead i have yeah i have that to me is one where susan well grimshaw well, yeah, yeah, Susan Grimshaw. I know her yeah. last name, but I was going to say, are there spoilers here? Because I don't want to, I can, people have played the game. Right? Yeah, yeah. So when Susan Grimshaw meets her, um, shall we just say her demise, the end of her road, mm -hmm. mm. I had uh, no idea. Because you know, video games don't shoot in order. We shoot out of order. Oh, gosh, yeah. And I got my lines uh, for the scenes the night before. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she's going to get shot. And I had no idea. And then it's this very, she she believes that she is really instrumental to the, the gang's success. Mm -hmm. That she is, she has made herself, transformed herself from being kind of just like this younger, sexy girlfriend type mm. to this older, invaluable member of the gang. And I think that's mm. how she has kept wow. herself um, feeling like useful. like Ma Barker, except not. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Keeping herself useful. Yeah. And then... When this big standoff happens and she gets shot by a traitor who shall not be named. <laughs> um, the traitor. The traitorous rat. <laughs> yes. Um, she gets shot. And because there is a big standoff happening, no one even checks on her. Mm. So she's lying there bleeding out. Oh, And perfect. no one comes to check on her. And here she's dedicated her life to these people. And then... Our incredible director, Rod Edge, is behind me. I'm on a mat where I fell. And he's saying, like, one more moan. So I'm, like, in the death rows, and he, he'd whisper, one more. And I'd be like, oh, oh. And it goes, when you see the scene, it goes on, like, throughout the dialogue. And oh. still nobody checks on oh. her. Oh. It's so sad. Oof. Wait, I'm intrigued. You said fall on a mat. Is that just to get the authenticity or was it motion capture? Oh, yeah, we did full. Oh, it was yeah, motion capture. I was going to ask you that. It sounds like this is a very physical. Red Dead is full performance capture. Absolutely wow. everything Susan Grimshaw did, I did. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah, know that. I she did. didn't fall from any buildings, right? No, no, she just okay, fell right. where she stood. Like, how far do you have to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah. That's, ooh, that's earning good <laughs> overtime yeah. for that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. So you were your own stunt person. Yeah. So, like, for example, if Susan is riding a horse, which she does quite a bit, they have a structure that is built to the size and scale of a horse. But it's oh. a real bridle. It's a real saddle. Maybe the actress, Kylie Runoff, might need a little step to step onto. But, yeah, you swing up onto there, and then it's like play pretend. Mm. Like you know? urban cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. But, but sort of. Sort of like an urban <laughs> cowboy. But you're in this big studio. And the cool thing about it is it's like theater in the round because the player could enter mm. from anywhere. Mm. So they have to capture it from every angle. Mm -hmm. But they also want film acting, so you have a camera right on your face. And then everything, like if I smoke, it's a cigarette because the animators will... Uh, that's a straw for a cigarette. Oh. And so the animators will make it a real cigarette. So it's like the best of all our worlds, right? It's theater in the round, it's wow. film on your face, and it's play pretend like when you're a kid. Mm. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I had no idea it was that bodacious. Oh my God, what a word. It was bodacious. Yeah, it does. It sounds kind of bodacious. Um, I think, by the way, that sitting here with you is really a thrill. <laughs> oh, say. but is it bodacious? It's a bodacious thrill. Oh, well, thank you. Thank it's you. It's like a bodacious you took roller the words coaster thrill ride. Right. Up. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say that. Yeah. 
Have Damn you been it. told that before? Uh, no, <laughs> it's been hours. <laughs> I mean, you're Thank just you. so incredible at what you do. Oh. And um, getting to talk to you a little bit while I've been here, the kindness and the support that you show other performers. Oh. Um, I'm getting a little emotional. It's really just makes me feel part of um, a beautiful lineage. Yeah. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> that is um, lovely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Good night, everybody. I'm gonna go grab a Kleenex. And, um, <laughs> I mean, thank it, though, you. it's a privilege. Thank you, thank you. Well, the privilege is all mine, and that's that's a beautiful sentiment. That is wonderful to hear. Thank you. I feel great. Thank you. For now I can me. go back to being a jerk, and I'll even out. No one will know. <laughs> no one will know. No I one feel will know. I'll be. It'll just the scales are now balanced, and if someone ever says you're mean, you just play them this clip, and you'll that's say, "That's right." Not I according will. to Ms. Grimshaw. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Before getting your roles and working with Rockstar, what was your what was your exposure to video games and like the video game world? Zero. Zero. Um, I had mm. no idea. So how did it feel when you first got offered a video game? Were you kind of like confound just um, really disorienting because I didn't understand what it was. I didn't mm. know it was performance capture. They yeah. are so tight lipped. So I did my audition, and I hope they don't hear this, but I got the material and it was one of the like worst scenes I'd ever read. Mm. And they had said it's for a video game and it was violence. She was, mm. she, but they, they didn't want it yeah. to leak that they were doing a sequel to Red Dead or a prequel. Um, and so she was, oh, was like this. It was a prequel. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a prequel. So that's when you know something's successful. Yes. They not only do sequels, they go, late. we shouldn't we do one? So you were on the right track. I was on the right track, but yeah. I didn't know because I didn't know that's what I was auditioning for. I knew mm. nothing about Rockstar. Mm. And so it was like this scene of this mom of a teenager who's really mean to her daughter and calling her horrible names. And I was like, what was that? Except I really liked the casting director mm -hmm. and I loved the woman I was reading with. Mm. And so I remember thinking it went really well, but then I didn't mm. hear anything for months. Oh. And so when they called and said, you're That's booked. That's always a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I forgot about it. it yeah. I just forgot about it because I didn't even know what it was I was auditioning for. I just, I remember thinking this scene is like weird and I don't like it. Mm. But then I really like these people. But of course, the casting director had written that scene that that probably that day mm -hmm. because they didn't want any material to come out and they just needed to see if I could be bossy and vicious and cruel. Mm. Um, and I could, <laughs> clearly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when I got the job... Oh, you got that one. <laughs> yeah. They told me when I got the job to report to the van pickup wearing comfortable undergarments. God, you get that too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that just was all they told me. Wearing comfortable undergarments. undergarments. And I thought... What are we going to be doing with my undergarments, what, first of all? What's happening here? Well, the good news is you got the job. I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you wow. show up and you're, you've are you got to have like comfortable undergarments because they're putting you in this Lycra suit with you know, I computer see. balls mm -hmm. all over it. Yeah. So oh, you have yeah, to have yeah. something comfortable to wear under your motion capture suit. Wow. And yeah. And then that's where the journey started. And um Rob Weedoff was there my first day, and mm. he plays John Marston, who was the mm -hmm. the star of the first game. Sure. And um, maybe one of the kindest gentlemen I've ever worked with. Yeah. Yeah, we went to dinner with him not too long yeah. ago. Yeah. He's yeah. just, you know, the kindest, loveliest, you know, really supportive. Mm -hmm. Because I had no idea what he was doing, what I was doing. And he said, well, you know, you'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. You'll pick it up. You've got this. And yeah. I know we look weird in these, like, scuba suits, but... You you won't even notice it after a while, and in fact, mm. that was true. You know? Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah, I don't I don't have much experience with that at all, except Tom yeah. Kenny and I were, we were cat dog, and we had to we had to. Wait, you do, were you were cat uh, dog? Cat dog cartoon ship. Oh yeah, Nickelodeon, and uh, we we were appearing. Gosh, a long time ago, appearing on a game show of all things at a convention somewhere, and it was a live game show. So we were sitting right next to each other, and we were covered in uh, all those little uh, motion sensors, what, whatever they were. Yeah, I don't and, know what to call them. Yeah. They're like little Velcro balls that yeah. the computer catches. Yeah. yeah, which I usually only do that at home. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was interesting. But uh, it was a live game show. So I, I remember doing that and thinking, this is the damnedest 
thing ever. But but look what they, I think by the time they got to you, they had it perfected. Yeah, well, was, that was so cool. You know, I shot Red Dead for four and a half years. and No kidding. Yeah. Whoa. And the technology would advance. So sometimes wow. you'd have to reshoot a little something because the technology had advanced. Oh. You know, or so our they characters had it. changed a little. Mm. Yeah, like they're 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 writing based on what this is what I think is incredible about Rockstar, was that our characters evolved sort of based on what they saw us doing. Oh that's cool. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. So like that's very cool. little changes to early scenes based on how now like how we know her to be. Uh -huh. And 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 the relationships that tighten up. Yeah, yeah. So we now know this this the relationship. The chemistry's picked up the on. Chemistry. They, it works and it and it oh wow, that's like to harken back to that scene with um the slap. Mm -hmm. Right? Like that that one we did later where we sort of understood how that Susan Arthur relationship is. And I remember the director was like, she is the only person that could slap Arthur and not get shot. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> so that's when you got juice. <laughs> that's when you so it's almost like not like a mother's son, not like a brother's sister, but maybe like your best friend's mother who you're kind of flirty with, but who can also tell you what to do. <laughs> like a really specific and getting it right was so important wow. to us. Yeah. So those types of things tightened up and changed as the relationships, you know, became clear. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really cool. cool. That's, that's kind of interesting to hear the, the evolution. Yeah. And, and people really get to know the characters in these games. It's yeah. really something. Yeah. You must get a lot of fans that come up and yeah. just don't know what to do. Well, because I never played a video game, that I think that was some of the, the meeting the fans is yeah. some of the most rewarding stuff. Oh, yeah. And I, the first convention I did was maybe six months after the release. I was actually here in London. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a long line of people coming to meet me, and a lot of them were women, which I was not expecting. Mm. And I remember this woman came up to me and she said, you know, I've got three kids, and at the end of the day, when I put them to bed, what I wanna do is play this game, and that's how I disappear, and seeing a woman who is a female character in middle age, who is not hypersexualized, and who gets to be bossy, and gets to be kind of annoying and gets to be, you know, like mean um, and still gets to have full agency within mm -hmm. this gang. Um, she said, you, I don't see a lot of that. Wow. And I really, you know, identify. And I thought, oh, we're storytellers. Right? Mm. Because at the end of the day, we're yeah. storytellers. Yeah. And Boy, representation, so you, yeah. right? So she's, you know, she's played a lot of video games and a lot of, you know, there are a lot of amazing female characters, but they're evolving. Mm -hmm. And so get to, disappear into a first person shooter game, but get to meet characters like me who are whole people. Yeah, yeah. You know, whole people. Right. And get to be, you know, yeah, annoying and bossy and mean and still <laughs> and still be welcome until and still, you yeah. know, the demise. But yet you're still touching people. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah that's really a cool. really good point. I feel like you really hit the nail on the head that like female characters, especially in video games, are evolving because I think traditionally they were very over sexualized yeah. in video oh, yeah. games, like specifically in that world. And you know, Absolutely. you think about like characters like Chun Li and you know, just like wearing pretty much nothing, but they're supposed to have mm. like a full suit of armor on or, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a good and point. even the, the brilliant protagonists are, you know, they need to look a certain way, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Appealing to the male gaze, I think, initially, until they sort yeah. of realize that what's happening is that there are a lot of women playing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now you get yeah, games I was like... going to ask you that. What, what do you feel like the... What's the demographic uh, at this point? Because it sounds like it evolves. Yeah, I have not... I have not been able to pigeonhole our demographic at okay. all. That's good. So last year we did a convention in Tombstone, Arizona, where mm. our, our whole, well, not our whole, but there were like 15 of us there. Oh, of wow. the Vanderlyn oh, gang. We were pretty That's cool. That's not bad. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And they, the, they had no idea how many attendees there would be uh -huh. because there weren't ticket sales. It was confusing. But anyway... Um, there were so many people there that the town ran out of like food and water. And what amazed me was how people came from everywhere. Mm. So I met mm. like a brother and sister who had never been off their Navajo reservation. Wow. That, My you know, goodness. and this was like their connect. I mean, it was incredible. A lot of um, mothers who brought their children who had started playing the game during um, COVID lockdown, mm -hmm. who had trouble making friends because of that, who had then made a whole community through playing our game. 
Um, wow. Yeah, I really. That's a nice it, contribution. It's a nice contribution. My goodness, yeah. Um, so parents thanking me for you know for giving their children something to do while they were locked down and yeah. un, and not That's social, true. and really and really every kind of person, every oh. kind of person. So that to me is like you put the work out there, and then I mean we. This game was released in 2018. Mm -hmm. I have not worked a day on this game since 2018. And so to oh. still be having people come up, it you know, it's, I don't know. It's really oh. That's really got to cool. be gratifying. That's got to exactly be right. Got to really be gratifying. very gratifying. Well, it's so nice to know that, you you know, you can touch people because, uh, you know, I get some of that too. And, and it's, um, you helped people get through fill in the blank and uh, clearly COVID. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, sitting there and I could take this bloody mask off and thank God for the, you know, it, it, yeah. up on the screen and yes. And, and making, finding a community that way. Yeah. So a lot of people that came to Tombstone, and I'm sure you have this too, mm. had never met in real life. And then they say, let's go to this convention. Yes. Yeah. So that's can, awesome. You know, like meet each other. And, um, yeah, that was really, wow. Really cool. That is so nice. Have you ever, has anybody ever come up to you cosplaying? Oh, oh, all like, the time. Uh, there you all go. All the Why time. Why did I know? <laughs> I, mean, I kind of thought so. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was amazing in Tombstone, too, because it was record-breaking Arizona heat, and they were all in their leathers and their hats wow. and waiting all day, and not one person <sighs> complained by the time they got in that room. Yeah. There was no indoor line. They were outside, and there was no Ooh, air conditioning fun in Tombstone. For them in Tombstone. Ooh. And they were in full cosplay, so corsets, and, I mean, and they... We get to the front of the line and you know I, I hugged more sweaty people because I felt like yeah. a they earned it you know yeah. and and B because you know I was sweaty too but it really felt like <laughs> we're doing this thing together yeah. you know we're doing well this I'm sure thing there together. were a few men in corsets as well there were. so that was that had to be just fun <laughs> yeah oh. I mean I sort of love that too gender is really yeah. fluid when it comes not to not that there's anything stuff. wrong with that no mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong it's awesome okay mm -hmm. I'm wearing one fine are you let me see <laughs> no let me see no <laughs> maybe later no <laughs> So well, what's great. your favorite part about meeting the fans? Do you have a, I, I hate the word favorite, Anything? but um, maybe maybe a few things. Well, for me, it's it's nice to know that you, because, well, just like you, you know, we're in, uh, we're in rooms. We're literally in padded cells that we speak to, have to speak into a microphone to talk to someone on. Yeah. So it's got a little, you know, you know, not insane asylum. Okay, insane asylum, but mm -hmm. uh, feeling to it. But it's it's nice to know that uh, what you're doing in a room with many many times nine times out of ten you're alone, yeah. you know the other actors aren't even there. That it goes out, they put it together, and they take your performance, and next thing you know you're touching thousands, maybe millions of people, yeah. and that um, and it's gratifying. And I've had people say that, you know, oh Winnie the Pooh has gotten me through, you know, I had this tragedy in my family. It was a a horrible this, a horrible that, and and I re I remember uh, one particular uh, fellow years ago. Uh, he was probably twenty years old, and uh, he was a twin. But his sister was very sick; she couldn't come to the convention. He, you know, uh, fraternal twins, I guess. And he said that the Disney afternoon helped him get through everything period because they lived in a very 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 tough part of town mm. so they would get off the bus and run into the house lock the door and they had a video cassette we all remember those video cassette recorder and his mom every morning when she had to go to work she would set the timer and record the disney afternoon well i was literally on every show oh my for god by hook or by crook thank you jesus <clears throat> uh, and i i truly am grateful for that but he um you know, he said eventually we, we started reading the credits and he said, oh, my gosh, he was Monterey Jack. He was bonkers. He was Darkwing. He was. And so they and, and it was very touching. And uh, he was just so sad that his sister couldn't be there. But he said, basically, he said, thank you for babysitting us, making sure we were safe. Oh. And you kept us safe until our mom got home. And I was like, oh, man. Thanks. I just thought I was going to work. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's so a you don't. You don't know. Thing. You don't have a sense of it. Yeah. You and tell uh, these stories and you put your whole heart into it and you do your best. 
Yeah. When you hear something like that. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you, the impact you made on yeah. their lives is something they will never forget. Yeah. And to get a chance to be told about it. Yeah. That's, that's so the true. benefit of this kind of thing. You know? That's. It's so beautiful. So true. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're a part of that world, too, and I'm yeah. a part of yours now. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for, you for having me. Here. But before we finish, yes. we, we got to do one thing really quick. Oh, oh yeah. I, love but, a, I love a one more thing. <laughs> Tell me what. I'll have a sip of water for my one we more We like to thing. do like a voice swap on this show. Yes. So there we go. Jim will do a line of one of his famous characters, and then if you could repeat it in a line of your famous characters and vice versa. Is that making sense? Wait, am I doing it in my own voice or I'm trying to imitate his voice? No, no you're, and, you're, and you're like a character. In your character. Yours. In my character, I'm mm -hmm. going to do one of your lines. Okay, and yeah. I think right? I've got a good That's one. That's right, yeah. Okay. Okay, here's Pooh asking a big favor. Oh, here. no. <laughs> Will you please pass the honey? <gasps> <laughs> I hate to make it mean, but Arthur, will you please pass the honey? <laughs> I'm passing something. I'm, I'm, I'm passing the honey. Okay. Okay, now it's your turn. Um, so let's see. What's a good one for me? Well, I don't want to be too um, gnarly. How about, um, I don't care how you feel, girl. Get to work. Let's see. Uh, who should that be, Pooh or Tigger, do you think? Oh, Tigger. <laughs> I don't care how you feel, girl. Get to bouncing. <laughs> I, I might have messed up the quote, but but thank you for it. That was so great. Oh, my oh, gosh. What an honor. Thank what, you for being here. so fun. Thank you for having me. And Thanks the crowd went wild. Here. Chris, can you take oh. us home? Sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. That was an episode. No. Yes, it was. It sure was. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. That was another episode of Tuned In with Jim Cummings with Kylie Vernoff. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and, of course, our Patreon channel. You can find bonus content and all that good stuff, and you can find this podcast wherever you find your podcasts. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Tuned In with Jim Cummings. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. That was terrific. You were dos mucho.